Hey, you watching hip hop made me do it right now with DJ Toasty Z, and I'm on the show. It's Dro. DJ Toasty Z in the booth. You already know mm-hmm. we got a very special guest in the studio with us today to this evening. We got <clears throat> Dro Ugly Fam Brown it's in me. the building. A.K.A. Mr. Massachusetts, yeah, A.K.A. Yeah. the ad lib king, the self proclaimed, <laughs> <Yep. laughs> the self proclaimed ad lib king. Preach, preach, brother, preach. Valley boy, you already know. Yeah, yeah, that's facts. Number Those one valley facts. boy, for sure, for sure. One of the key yeah. members of Egomaniac Records. Hey. Um, your final four EP came out almost a year ago now. It's yeah. been. It's been a minute, but uh, it's a great EP you put out, 10-song yeah, EP. S- I got some stuff that's almost finished it right now, actually. You, you got some new stuff coming yeah. soon? Yeah, I've been dropping mostly singles. Chalo said this was the year for singles, so I was like, yeah, respect. For Chalo, sh- for Chalo sure. knows what's up, so um, that's why I dropped a bunch of like the shit that you heard, but a lot of it, or half of it, is going to be on Drew Brown is Dead. Awesome. So that's what that's what's going to be next. For sure, for sure. Well, I'm looking forward to that. And we'll get to that in a little bit. I want to yeah, ask we'll you a bit more about that. We'll talk. We'll talk. Um, now, J- Joe, you're the you're one of those artists where I like to say you're some of the you know. There's a lot of weird hip hop that comes out of Western Mass. <laughs> yeah, true. But you're definitely on some of the weirdest hip hop that comes out of this area. <laughs> um, but <Respect>. how, <laughs> um, you know, a lot of very, you know, very eccentric, a lot of energy, a lot yeah. of weird energy. How would you describe your sound? Damn, that's a that's a good question. A lot of people ask me that and every time i'm like damn i don't even really want to think about it um i don't know bro i like to i like to say i sound like me i'm just trying to do me which i guess is like you know that's kind of what everybody's trying to do at the end of the day as far as like what what i think i sound like i don't even know man i've listened to so much different hip-hop i've been trying to think about like well who's like one of my greatest influences and i don't, I don't even know cam cam's my dad cam, cam? yeah for but, sure. But I don't do, you know, I don't do, like, the hoochie hoochie, schooly wooly, tooly toot all the time. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. For sure. How do you think Cam influenced you? Um, Man, well, he was my dad. Me and him, we would play catch, <laughs> kiss him on the cheek. Mwah, dad, love you. No, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. So my, I listened, I didn't even realize, like, growing up how much of Cam I listened to and, like, I guess a lot of like Rockefeller. Rockefeller also like really yeah. influenced me. If like if like people had to choose between like Dipset or G Unit, I'm, I'm Dipset all day. Dipset all day. Yeah. If the world is G Unit versus Dipset, I'm Dipset. It's, yes. Um, and like even before like mm-hmm. before G Unit was a thing, like like Cam was killing it in like the late '90s, and Mace was killing it. Mace For world, sure. bro. So did you uh, see that? Speaking of Cam, did you see that Vanessa Carlton flip he did? Yeah, hell yeah. That was so hell weird. Yeah. And part of me, <laughs> part of like, me, wow, my dad is back. <laughs> <laughs> part of me, like, it's when anyone some does that, something like part of you, like, wants to hate it, but you're like, it's Vanessa Carlton and Cam, and it's just so ridiculous, and I love it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so, that's, that's what I love about Cam, too. Cam will do some shit that's, or, or excuse me, some stuff. You can, you can curse. We'll edit it out like, later. Right, Don't worry right, about we'll it. Bloop. This Just is uncensored, Dro. Yeah. Yeah. True. No need to dump here. Cam. Cam will do some shit that's like, is he'll he'll make you like remember that like oh yeah he really was on the block, making girls shake that ass and like you know what I mean <laughs> like like breaking bricks down and hiding it in the butthole that was Cam and then he'll also just be like yeah I'm wearing pink furs dipped out dipped her and just like do Dude, some that, goofy that shit that was the pink fur that was like signature Cam and yeah. like that's what I see about you is like. You're not afraid to get goofy with it. You, I don't know. You almost create like a character, you know, and a persona True. when you're on um, the mic. Then that that's that's like what Cam influenced me to do. Really, it was like I like doing some shit. I'm not I'm not like really a hood person. I would say I'm a real person. Like, For sure. Like if you're gonna talk some shit about me, I'll fight you. Like, yeah, I, I, w- I wouldn't. I wouldn't mess with you. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. You're a nice I'm guy, but <laughs> I'm I like, yeah, cross right, you. right. I don't I don't carry like a gun or a knife or anything, but I'll fight you with a fair one. But at the same time, I also like was an AP calculus for like a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, so I try and like mix the two things that I know people that like, like really, really cook crack and really hold guns. And I know yeah. some people that really just like graduated from college and got their master's degree. 
not like, the yeah, masters yeah, but shouts out toast recent indeed. college grad we're doing it out here yeah, you know how it is. let's go let's go congrats let's get that's it. a big accomplishment i never really you know congratulated you for that oh it's all good yeah. you know just another you know right on to the next one yeah you know? milestones it's, whatever dude yeah <laughs> just che- checklist you know cross <laughs> it off um the other thing i want to ask you is um i noticed on that chalice cover is that a back in the day picture of you with yeah. the saxophone yeah yeah was that like is that like one of the, your first instruments you started playing? Is that how you started getting I, into music? Or yeah, that was definitely my first instrument. It was the alto sax. I got that. My dad weirdly, shouts out to my dad. Yeah, my dad. Uh, my dad bought an alto sax from a pawn shop. Like he would just go to this pawn shop just to like scope shit out in Boston yeah. and be like, "Ooh, that's kind of nice. That's a nice thing. Hmm, maybe. Ooh." Uh, and then he saw the saxophone one day and was just like, "Oh, I'm gonna buy that for Hondro," <laughs> and then bought the saxophone and brought it home. I, was, I mean, this was when I was yeah. before, like, six. I was really young. And then I didn't start playing it till I was, like, six. And I started taking saxophone lessons. And uh, I didn't practice. And I didn't – I, like, I liked playing. I mm-hmm. liked playing a lot. Like, my dad's friends would come over, and they would be, like, jamming. And I would just whip out my saxophone and, like, jam with them, even though I didn't yeah. really know that much. I would still jam. And then I hated going to lessons, and I hated mm-hmm. practicing. But I was kept playing saxophone. I played tenor saxophone in band. And then probably, like, high school, I was just like, nah, bands for nerds. <laughs> was that your only instrument before you started rapping, or? Uh, I played the drums a little bit, and uh, that was the only thing. Honestly, the drums, bro. Yeah. Oh, my God, I was telling somebody this story. My parents, yo, shouts out to my parents, but sometimes they fucking suck, bro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had, my dad played the drums when he was, like, whatever, I don't know, but he didn't really play the drums, and thanks to white privilege, I got a drum set, basically, mm-hmm. and it would be downstairs, and I would be playing the drum for like hours in seventh grade, like when I come home, and no like no training. I would just be like trying to emulate shit and just like bopping around. And I guess I annoyed the shit out of my mom because she. <laughs> I came home one day and that shit was gone. Now drum set was nowhere to be found. I probably did that for like three months and she was going nuts. And uh, yeah, that's it. Saxophone word, and word. drums. Well, speaking of like white privilege, I I guess we haven't really ever talked about like what your background is as far as like ethnicity yeah, and stuff I'm, like that. I'm three quarters Puerto Rican and one quarter Jewish. My dad grew up. Shouts out to my real dad, my biological dad. Both yeah. dad, both my dads are my real dads. But, mm-hmm. but the dad that I share my genes with is half Puerto Rican, half Jewish. Nice. From um from Manhattan, Chelsea, Chelsea Projects. Shouts out to Chelsea. For Grandma sure. May. For sure. And did you did you grow up in the valley or uh, I know you yeah, claim Yeah, yeah, I mean for really for the most part. I lived here. I moved here when I was six. About okay. the time I started playing the saxophone. And I started, I moved out here. And I mean before that I lived in Puerto Rico, in San Juan. I lived uh I lived in Cambridge, like Seattle. I was born in Cleveland. Oh, okay, word, word. So that's yeah. Wow. I don't, I don't I mean, I guess really what happened was my mom living in Boston for some reason and then she met my dad who's raised me mm-hmm. and then he's from Amherst so then we just came back out here at some point um, 96 <laughs> for sure for sure and what was like oh, do you remember it all living in San Juan or like what yeah I remember was? living in Puerto Rico for sure that was um that was like a really interesting time because um, San Juan San Juan is is cool man San Juan is really cool but like Puerto Rico, now it's different. But at the time, it was a little, it was socialized a lot of the thing, especially a lot of like the public yeah. services. So, it it was like, it was like if you could pay for like schooling and you mm-hmm. could pay for like private insurance and all this shit, then everything is super gravy. For sure. If you can't and you got to rely on like municipal services, like forget about it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking forget about there's, it. There's yeah, there's a lot of areas where it's like. It's nice if you have money, but yeah. you know if you don't have money, yeah. it's not easy. You well, know? then it's weird too, cause like we pay we pay taxes to the United States, but we mm-hmm. get no representation. So that's like literally some stuff that this yeah, country well, was made over for sure. But it's also a small, small little island nation that kind of wants to be able to use U.S. currency and like mm-hmm. have the protection of the United States, not really have to worry about anything, and just get tourism from the U.S. Definitely. Um, a lot of lot of weird like San San Juan San Juan is is a big city, bro. Mm-hmm. So like there'd be some weird stuff like my abuelita got robbed at like gunpoint, point like yeah by just people who just like junkies, you mm-hmm. know. And then there's also like rich white people that walk around. Oh yeah, and they speak Spanish though. They're Puerto yeah. Ricans, you know what I mean? Like for sure. I don't and know. It's it's bizarre. I went there. The weirdest thing to me was always there's I feel like a lot of like Caribbean or like island vacations is like. A bunch of really wealthy like white people going to stay at a resort 
and you like drive you drive from the airport and you see all this you know you see the real disparity of like these people that are literally just coming to like stay in an isolated resort that like beach yeah and then you're crashed you know driving through all this poverty and that's it's not really a cultural di- experience and it, there's like this huge disconnect and huge disparity yeah puerto rico is also weird because it's like like i said it's like uh, it, it's a territory of the united states so it still gets taken care of but not as way. well but not, not as well, well. I, was re- no, I was not as well i was hearing about how they were trying to like get more representation and more like yeah, funding it, and like it kind of is the last it's the last thing on like the Congress's mind because it's like yeah, well, you know nobody gives a shit, uh, unfortunately. But Puerto Rico didn't want to be a state; they want to be independent, but we're not. It, yeah, it's like a it's, it's a whole little thing for sure. But, but at the same time, a lot of my, like I, I have family members that um, like Puerto Ricans range in all sorts of like different shapes, colors, and sizes and mm-hmm. shit. And I have a lot of family members that are like all about like mi gente and mi isla, but like there's a whole population of people that like most people don't even know exist because they're just kind of like hidden and it's just like the same as it is here like the black people just are put to a different part and they're not really spoken about and yeah all this other shit it's a weird it's a weird it's place like it's a, even if it's not it's like segregation yeah you no know? it's 100 percent. you know 100 percent segregation yeah. even if it's not like by law it, it you know it's still you, yeah yeah you know? it still happens and it's you know it's to make sure that the tourists are like made happy and a lot of like a lot of spanish people in general mm-hmm. just tend to be like kind of weirdly about color but Shouts out to Puerto Rico. I love Puerto Rico. For sure. For <laughs> sure. Um, so I was also curious, like, you you touched on, like, Cam a little bit, but I'm curious, like, how you originally got into hip-hop and, like, who are some of the artists that, like, you know, you first remember listening to? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. That's a good question, Toasty. Um, I always try with the good questions. <laughs> That's always the goal. Yeah. You want to know what the first album I ever had, like, ever? Like, yes. Regardless? Give it to me. Peter and the Wolf. Peter and the Wolf. On CD. Yeah. Peter and the Wolf. What mm-hmm. is that? It's a symphony. And it tells a story about this kid, basically like Little Red Riding Hood, that's running from a wolf. Mm, yeah, that was my first uh, <laughs> it's my first album very, ever that I own. Very owned. eclectic. Um, damn. Hip-hop? I don't know. It started like kind of early. My dad had like a weird collection of tapes. Yeah. My dad is kind of like, my dad is a cool dude. Um he he really was into like things like like the Grateful Dead mm-hmm. and like Bruce Springsteen. He he like he ranged all sorts of or all sorts of shit like conservative rock like to hippie rock. Yeah, and then also would have like Sex Packets and like the Humpty Dance and N.W.A. <laughs> and Ice Cube and like all this other shit and Ice T and all of it was uncensored. So he would just show me like that's all crazy this, like raw ass like Ice Cube stuff before he started acting. And was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like no Vaseline and <laughs> and, for sure and stuff like that, and yeah. uh, and then and that that was probably like, I don't know, like ninety four, ninety five. Like I was listening to like some really raw, explicit stuff. Yeah, and I'm, then uh, yeah, just like kept going from there. I don't know. I grew up also like listening to a lot of Biggie. Yo, all my friend Big sure. L, Big L and Biggie. Yeah, that was huge. And people listen to Tupac too. And now I respect Tupac more than I did back then. But I was also, like, kind of disillusioned by, like, the whole, like, East Coast, West Coast beef that didn't exist. For like, sure. It was just, like, fabricated. At the end yeah, of the day, like, yeah. Biggie and Tupac are very different artists, and it's tough to compare them. I yeah. always thought, like, you know, like, it's, like, I always think of it, like, okay, as far as lyricism, like, Tupac, as far, if he was in a rap battle, like... He would get versus Biggie. He would be destroyed. He wasn't right. like a battle rapper, right. but he could tell a story and right. paint pictures and you know get motions. Versus Biggie's just gonna like murder you on the mic lyrically. Yeah, his bars you know? and like the way he spit was like so ahead of its time. But the what what Tupac's subject matter was was way ahead of its time too. Like Tupac was talking about some really deep, heartfelt shit for and sure, putting it through to the community for and sure, trying to like really do some like cool things for the people that he was like putting it out to and biggie was trying to just do some dope shit for like like yeah hip-hop you for know sure I, mean? I don't know but yeah yeah 100 percent. i actually back in the day i wrote a i don't know if that many people know this but i wrote an extended essay for this program i was in high school it was a 20 page paper on tupac actually oh hell yeah yeah dude it That's was sick. it was it was one of the funnest papers to write and you know just i don't know i think one of my best works funerific um, so when did you actually start like rapping? Like 
do you remember like a specific yeah. moment or time um the first time i ever like freestyled i was probably like 15 or something like that and then i just kept doing it i don't know i started like writing shit down i was like 16 so that was like that was literally like 11 years ago mm -hmm. and then i never really stopped but it it would it would come up from like me having some sort of like it would always be like a really hard moment like that just had happened and then i would yeah. go like sit down and write some like familial shit usually mm -hmm. and then everybody would kind of be like asleep and it would be like dark and i'll just like write just like Late a rap, it wouldn't be anything like about the situation. It wouldn't be like, oh man, I hate my dad yeah. and I hate my mom. It would just be like, yeah, I'm in a '64 Chevelle. <laughs> like I don't <laughs> yeah. know, just Some like weird... a, yeah, just like a, a skate, but not like you know. Yeah, you, well, you know, I always thought that like hip hop, like, was just is it, the same as like emo anything. It's mm -hmm. just like, it's just like what people like from the hood then would be like, well, like. Maybe if I had these things, life would be better. Yeah, but it's, it's really it's just like, like it's like emotional, but there's like a mask of like hyper masculine. Like yeah, right. Like you know, I'm never. This, this is my dreams. You I'm know, never, I never. I never. My dick's never soft, man. <laughs> I'm. I'm always out here on these streets. I never get depressed, even though everything around me is so depressing. Yeah, they're talking mm. about some really heavy stuff, <laughs> yeah. and like, I mean, at the first, and then like, it slowly became acceptable to show emotions and show a different side, where it's just like, you know, it's. I don't know. We've, we've come a long way, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. For mental sure. health. Shouts out to mental health. Shouts out to mental health and keeping it real. Yeah. You know? Don't forget, you always got someone to talk to. No, no bullshit. For sure. Joe Brown is here for you. Yeah. Right. I'm here for you as well. <laughs> Toasty's here for you. Call in. Call in. <laughs> Not You can't call in now, but in general, call into the show because we always like to give some support, show some love, play some music. Um, there was another thing I wanted to bring up. I think there was a... a I don't, there's a little bit of a confusion, I feel like. Mm. Now, so Egomaniac Records, mm -hmm. you're part of Egomaniacs. Mm -hmm. Now, Ugly Fam. Mm -hmm. Now, at first I thought it was just something that you called yourself. No. But someone else was saying that it's like a, like also record label. Like, what's the, is it? Ugly Fam is like. Abstract, is it like. Yeah, there isn't. It's, yeah, actually, you want to know what Ugly Fam actually yeah. is? Like, yes. this is the truth. Ugly Fam is just a cool kids club. Okay. Like. Like, it's uh, myself. Actually, I'm not even going to list who's in it. We try and keep it secretive, I it's guess, a, it, is the thing. That's why I it's was, confusing. Uh, is. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> confusing. I was trying to, like, make it, like, a big thing with a lot of different people and try and, like, recruit people. For sure. And then that kind of got nixed by, like, the, the oligarchy of, uh, of Ugly Fam. So <laughs> now it's just, like, some weird secretive stuff that I don't even know if I should really talk about. But it's a group of people. Like, we make art and... Um, we get together for like weird weekends where we get pretty lit and try and come up with <laughs> ideas for for things and sometimes we make clothes and so it's a secret music cult yeah it's a secret music cult bro ugly fam <laughs> for sure awesome um <laughs> now the other thing that i want to ask you is like you know you have a song valley boy yeah you know self-proclaimed valley boy I want to ask you about this beef you have with, with the, the whole West, West Mass, Mass thing. thing. What's what's up with oh, that? Bro, oh, don't even get me started. Jimmy Shu Wang started West Mass. I put that on everything. That And even if you look on the Jimmy Shu Wang stickers, oh, yeah. there's a little R right mm -hmm. next to West Mass, a little registered R. But you know what's funny is that I put that there on my own hand, and didn't I, I didn't actually register You're, it. You didn't register it? It was no. just a joke? No, well, it wasn't trying to be i wanted you know if somebody saw it saw it be like oh <laughs> scare west away. mass is registered trademark but obviously these people didn't see it and uh i should have like ten thousand dollars at least from this minimum i should have registered that asap yeah lesson lesson for everybody who's out there who's making little things or trying to do something with what you're doing you never know what's going to happen you trademark. literally never know what's going to happen trademark if, patent if you have that. an idea yeah if you have an idea and you got a name for it and a brand and all this just send it to yourself in a notarized mail thing and then say that it's copyrighted and then you have it copyrighted basically and then you don't ever it costs you like five five dollars it that's it to get something registered Real, trademarked is it really that simple it's it's mad simple dude it's mad simple i'll have to keep that in mind as we move forward with hip-hop made me do it you know yeah well, you, you should trademark sure that you phrase that. Yeah, right away for real yeah, I still need to lock down that YouTube page. I still don't have the official URL. I need to get that 100 subs. Well, uh, oh, really? Shoot. Yeah. Shoot, I'll, I'll sub you, dude. Yeah, you got to sub me. <laughs> I got you. you. We're, at, we're at 47 right now. Yo, we're shout halfway out to there. everybody who's listening. If you're, well, I mean, when you're listening, go 
Or sub. watching, yeah, sub. Or when you're watching, watching this yeah. on YouTube, like, sub. sub yeah. You know how it is. You know, whatever the, the casters say. They, they say all sorts of shit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Comment, like, subscribe, follow. There we go. That. Spread, share. <laughs> all the adjectives. Um, you know what's crazy, though? Huh. Did you know that the Pioneer Valley... I actually, the more I say West Mass, I'm just starting to like it. I like to say Western. Yeah, well, I, I like to say Western too. Mass too. I loved it. I just hate that now they it's stole theirs. It. Yeah, yeah, now it's not yours. It's now not, it's not it was mine. special. But the crazy thing is, did you know that the v- Pioneer Valley isn't even a valley? Yeah, barely. Yeah, they just ma- named it a valley. They're like Pioneer Valley just to get people to move out here. Like mm. back in the day, Shoot. they're like, "Oh, the Pioneer Valley," well, and everyone's like, oh, "I'm a pioneer. Let me come out to the valley." You know, like. Yeah. So I guess technically I'm not a real valley boy, but that's alright. No, I just mean like you know, technically <laughs> Pioneer Valley is not an accurate term at all. But um, West what you, Mass is accurate. West Mass. What do you think? What's your favorite thing about living in the valley in West Mass? Um, not winter. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's great right now. Right now is perfect. No offense to any students. Shouts out to UMass and all the students that come to Amherst, but right now it's like perfect it's quiet, without yeah. any students. It's about to be nice weather. You can go swimming in like all the little streams and brooks that are everywhere. For There's sure. Weed around. I need to chill. hit. I need to hit up Puffers before I leave. Yeah, well, Puffers is a cool spot. And it's actually going to be cool because there won't be that many people there. Yeah. There'll still be a lot of people there. For sure. But there's like, oh man, I'm about to expose some places. Most of these places people probably already know, but Stanley. It's like Stanley Street. I know and Stanley. Like you can go. Oh, let's see. Where else in Amherst can you go to swim? Silver Bridge. Yeah, I don't. They got a little. Rope I know how to get there. there. Wait, I, yeah, I think I know what it is. That's in North Amherst too. It's like just down the street from Puffers. That's a good little place. Yeah, yeah. Um, yo, the Belcher Town Town Beach. Ooh, that's fun as hell, bro. I haven't been there. Yeah, that's a good one. That's really, that's technically not Amherst, but it's pretty close. Have you been to Montague, the like by the book mill? I've been to the book mill. I've never been swimming. There's like a water. I don't know. I went there once. It was pretty, we had a drought last summer, so it was like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Orange in uh, Florence. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. There's a little bit of a hike to get there. It's not that hard to get there, though. You just like park behind this weird apartment. And you just walk, and then all of a sudden you're in a dope little swim spot. Honest, honestly, that can sometimes be more rewarding. I, when I was in Iceland, I did like a three mile hike. It was like an hour or whatever, and pretty strenuous. At the end, there's these natural hot springs. So yeah. you get you do your hike, and you're like, all right, let me bathe in these hot springs and just yeah, chill out. Right, and you're bro. like, you know what? I feel good about myself. Let me enjoy these hot springs. Then um, you gotta walk back. <laughs> True, but but then your muscles are all relaxed. It's all downhill. You're you all know. Number, oh, it's all downhill. Yeah. yeah all right. All right, uh, all right. I'll, I'll, do I'll down mountain. <laughs> I'll do it. Next Fly time, me to next time you, yeah, you know, <laughs> for sure. Let's do it. Next time I'm in Reykjavik, I'll go for a hike. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on the checklist. Yeah, right. Another no bucket thing. list, just checklists. <laughs> um, now, what do you think? Like the best thing about the Valley music scene is also, or what's unique about the Valley music scene compared to other places? Uh, I said it before. Uh, look at that phone call. Sorry, I'm gonna have to call this man back. Um, I've said it before, and I guess this is probably just going to be what I say until I die. My kids will be like, yeah, whatever, dude. Heard you say this. Um, is that there's, like, nothing that sounds like us. You might like it. You might not like it. And there might be other things that sound similar, but as a whole, as, like, a collective of musicians that also like each other or don't like each other, Mm -hmm. nothing really, like, sounds remotely even close like who sounds like god's wisdom no one yeah who sounds like like deja like, oh n- no 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 one like I, I don't even know bro there's so many so many different people for that, sure that make like also lucy who sounds like lucy no like, one nobody lucas my, has his own sound my friend my mom actually was saying that she she said she i was playing lucy and she said it, it sounded like nah, she didn't say the talking head she said the cure i think she said oh for real yeah and i was like well that's definitely a compliment yeah everything has like a weird like like i don't know the way i think about it and some people may agree or may disagree and that's up to you but i'm gonna make this statement anyways so i feel like it has some like uh new york 1970s like velvet underground type sound where everything is like mad diy and like for sure. Some people don't even know how to play the instruments, but they're still rocking it. You know what I mean? Definitely. Like, <laughs> that's yeah, how I feel. Just rock it. You know, do what you can with what you have. Yeah. 
Um, I'm also curious how you feel like you fit into the Valley scene and just the dynamics of it. Um, you know, you're, uh, like I said, I always talk to Lewis and like, I don't know I joking around him as like the grandfather of the Valley scene yeah. because yeah, I was about to you say. know he was he was one of the first people that like really started rapping and before him like hip hop was not that big in the area and he like inspired a lot of people yeah um but I don't know I, are you you're a bit later into the hip hop game compared to like Lewis and them right um so I started rapping with Lewis I got Lewis's first show actually his first paid show at Snowsy's and we did that shit together like 2011 but what happened was i moved to new york okay and then i moved to australia fell into a deep dark depression in australia and pretty much didn't do anything damn i, I like i went out there to play lacrosse so i played lacrosse and i did yeah. that but otherwise i didn't really do anything I, I performed one time in australia and i made probably like four or five songs probably wrote like six or seven in the whole time i was there i was there for like two years you were you were in australia for two years and what age was this um this was right after this is 2013 to the end of 2014 into 2000 like up until 2015 so i was there no i was there i swear i turned 25 there Mm -hmm. or no 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 no. sorry sorry yeah it was michael jordan year and kobe year i turned 23 and 24 in australia okay word and so what was your time like out there so i know like i said you played so you played d1 lacrosse right did yeah. you was that like after you left school and then you went to australia nah, to play I, lacrosse or i dropped out of school to start rapping all right all right so 2009 i mm -hmm. graduated from high school 2010 i was playing lacrosse at the university of denver 2011 probably like halfway through i dropped out and i quit the team like after fall ball whatever but at at school like my whole freshman year my whole sophomore year i was barely even going to class i was just rapping i was just making music and going to practice so at one point and i, and I was i was smoking mad weed so that's why i got that's why i ended up quitting the team because yeah. they were going to suspend me for like a whole year and i was like trying to be realistic like i'm not really here for school anyways i'm here to play lacrosse and i'm just like rapping i'm not really doing anything with the actual school mm -hmm. so it doesn't even make sense to be here waste my time yeah waste the money that the school is giving me waste the money that my parents are giving me yeah none of that makes any sense so i moved back home i got this weird acting gig here at umass mm -hmm. and i met this kid darius and darius is from amherst same class as lewis he was like oh you're a rapper i'm gonna introduce you to this kid louis go and then that's how I met Louis Go. It was Word. in 2011. Before any of shit really popped off. Okay. Chalo, Chalo was Louis's manager at the time. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't he was telling rapping. me about that, yeah. Um, <coughs> Lucas and Dark World was, like, way smaller. Mm -hmm. And I remember they were, they were throwing these dope-ass parties that were totally, like, were totally dope. And they were, like, punking it out. And all these kids were there. And it was pretty cool. But we were we were doing shows, and then we were also linked up with these older cats. Actually, one who I just was at a podcast with, this dude Earl, who mm -hmm. he's like a little bit lesser known. But I don't know if you ever like heard of Voorhees and the Problematics. That sounds familiar. They were like, they they kind of like are the OGs <laughs> of like Western mass hip hop. Yeah. On some like backpackers, like yeah, put your hands up, yo, let go, yeah, Problematics in the place to be. And um, so this dude Voorhees actually my pops mm -hmm. is best friends with his dad and they grew up in amherst and so jason weeks shouts out to jason weeks he like he put me on to like some of my like bigger shows i opened up for like um buckshot like some duck down people yeah and he also got me the plug well actually no he didn't give me the plug for snowsies that was something else but he's a cool dude mm -hmm. jason jason war he's a cool dude um but yeah so that's basically like me lewis lucas sen uh, Ghost two at the time, you're at. Those were like and Nikolai vocals. Nikolai vocals for sure. Those were like the first people I remember rapping in the area. Oh no, not even true. There was Winter Circle. Shouts out to Goon Von Doom. Goon Von Doom was in Winter Circle with Chit Chat and Ronald. Hey, and what else? There was I swear to God, there were some other people. The Verbal Surgeon and like Rock Fox and some Northampton oh, yeah, yeah. cats like. Yeah, I, I interviewed Verbal Surgeon was the second interview I did, I think. Oh, word. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a cool guy. Yeah, definitely. Shouts out to Verbal Surgeon. <laughs> um so I also want to ask you about 
your tour uh, in Kenya you'd recently came back from with yeah. Chalo. How was what was that experience like? Oh man, it was crazy actually. Like everything about the whole trip was crazy. Mm -hmm. Lost my bags. <laughs> had some really heartfelt like tear jerking moments. Yeah. Um also had some like struggle moments <laughs> where uh some of us ran out of bread and <laughs> we became water became scarce. <laughs> Literal bread? <laughs> <laughs> literal bread and like money bread um yeah th some some things were weren't planned out as well as like maybe they could have been but that's okay for sure um the trip overall was amazing and we did some amazing things with some amazing people and i met some amazing kids and uh chalo has made like an amazing connection with this school there jatigame and they're, mm -hmm. they're doing some great things um and just the people themselves were amazing the whole the whole country is beautiful Gorgeous. For sure, what? Nairobi makes you sick, but it's still gorgeous. <laughs> it's a weird testament to humankind. Uh, do you have any like major highlights that you remember? Any like specific shows? Yeah, or? I got a high point and a low point. Okay. Um, high point for sure was the first like school we did a little event at, uh, which was Jitigame, and uh, man, I don't know. I, I can't. I don't even know if I can explain it. It was so for me. It was so like amazing and it, it it was beautiful out of context because like this was a school for like it was a self-proclaimed needy school in machacos mm -hmm. um the city of machacos so like whatever that means to you like you'll uh, unless you go you can't really understand like what the city itself is like or what it's sure. like but it's it's a school that's self-proclaimed for needy kids mm -hmm. and these kids wanted to be in school like every single day you know what i mean like that was their support yeah. structure. Like maybe they had parents at home who were supportive. Maybe they didn't, but the school was always going to make sure that you were fed and like, you know, all this other stuff. And so they were like, really like, they really cared. They really cared about school and they really cared about doing well. And they really cared about the whole school. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about all the times that I went to school and all the places that I was like privileged enough to go to. Yeah. And like how I spent my time at school like <laughs> what i chose to do smoking weed. smoking weed and not going to class yeah. i mean i was writing raps so like you know i was trying to be productive but also i wake up every morning and be like oh my god this class nah i'm not going I'm about to get super baked and then i would end up you know playing mm -hmm. video games or writing music which is just like crazy to think about like yeah it's a school that people apply to get into they don't get in and if you, you do get in and you have the privilege of going most people have to pay like fifty two, fifty four thousand dollars to go to yeah so, for sure and it puts it just puts everything in, in perspective. perspective. Yes, yeah. yeah. You get a good reference point. So that that was a high point for me, was having that experience. And then the low point was uh, this is this is classic dro. I was like, man, I, I had been living it like yeah. everything everything I was doing, man. I was like, man, I don't care. I got to shit in a hole. I don't care. <laughs> I got to eat goat yeah. that like just got chopped up and like people. Come. I don't care about none of that. I don't care. I'll go outside and eat some mangoes right off the tree. I don't care. Yeah. That and, real experience. And um, so, like, like Chalo told me that the that his homies and all the people around us were calling me a shambik. And it's like a homie, basically. Like, mm -hmm. you're a real shambik. Like, you yeah. can really do this. And I was like, yeah, thank you. I just, I appreciate you guys showed me the way and, like, let me in. And I'm just doing what you guys do. Whatever. And um, so we went to a hotel to get some dinner. And we mm -hmm. were running out of our own bottled source of water. And the hotel offered water in a pitcher. And the whole time... We were only drinking bottled water, and that was for a reason, because you're yeah. not supposed to drink the fucking water. And yeah. I was like, well, the hotels got this water in the pitcher. <laughs> they must have their own water source that they trust, because they're serving it to people yeah. to drink. And uh, this other dude, Brainy, who's an OTC member, was drinking the water. And yeah. so I was like, you know what? I can drink the water. I can drink the water. <laughs> I lived in Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can drink this water, which, by the way, Puerto Rican water is totally fine. You can drink from the tap. It's not... You're not going to get sick. But... <laughs> <laughs> I drank this water and probably like eight hours later, man. Oh my god, I was For so sure. I was so hit. I was so hit, and there was this little dog. I was throwing up everywhere in the yard. Like Damn, I, I ran outside and it was hurting, like like not fun. And I threw up one time, went back inside and still hurting, and then went back outside, threw up again. But this little dog that I had been like kind of um, befriending this whole week, mm -hmm. um, Bryson Tillamook. That's what I named him. Uh, he was eating up my vomit. That was. <laughs> I was like, Oh no! I'm, 
I think I'm gonna die because all the all the other thing I was thinking about was like, man, we have no water in the house, and I'm like throwing up. I'm gonna be dehydrated, <laughs> and I don't even know like what kind of services they got here. Yeah, I don't you know were if thinking I gotta ahead. Get to, you were just like, if I gotta get to a hospital, like, oh my god, and then I'm throwing up like, Aah! and the dog is coming over like, ooh, what's that? <laughs> oh, thanks, Dro. You really are my friend. <laughs> That's so crazy. that was definitely the low. And then that was like two days before I had to leave too, bro. So I was like sick in Nairobi trying to get to the airport, oh. just traveling through like this. Travel's smog. terrible enough. Yeah, and we were just hopping on mutatus left and right through Nairobi, like just running through the city, just mm-hmm. jumping on a bus, jumping off a bus. And I had all my shit with me. I was not. And how, how long were you out there? Dude. Um, two weeks. Where? Two weeks Where? Of, uh, of Kenya. It was... Uh, a good good time i wrote lots of music out there too man it was it was awesome honestly eto um from dub c was out there aaron mentos um was also a one tribe member mutu saba was mutu saba is one of my like that's that's the god i met caleb caleb diku yeah i met jonathan diku man it, it was just it was awesome bro it was just awesome i'm going back next year we're gonna go m- to mombasa for sure. Do you ever, was there like a specific show that really stood out to you or like? Nah, um, to be honest, the shows were okay. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> there was one show, generally speaking, like when we performed, uh, most people didn't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to but, shows like that, yeah. But there would be like, always, there'd be like two or three, four or five people that would just be like rocking out heavy yeah. and so that's always that's always just makes a show but there was one show where there was this dude and he was super drunk mm-hmm. and i was on stage performing and granted like nobody cared so like it didn't matter but he was like <laughs> trying to he was trying to he was like stepping on stage to try and whisper stuff in my ear and uh, n- on, not on some gay shit not on some gay shit. no of course no not. homo and it was just to be like yeah i really like hip-hop and i was like okay like i'm performing dude and so then after the show this dude and his brother come up to us, and he's just, like, talking to me. And I, he introduced himself as Captain Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> that was his full name, Captain Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. And and he was just mostly talking, like, a whole bunch of, like, drunk and ramble. Yeah. But it was dope. Every time I, I, I would be, I would say, like, yo, Captain Jack, and he'd be like, that's not my name. It's Captain Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> I was like, what's up with this dude? What's up with your mans? And his brother was just kind of like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry about this. But I was I was entertained. It was amusing. There was some funny funny stuff that Chalo wouldn't want me to talk about, so I'm not going to talk about it. There was to. a lot of funny stuff For that sure. happened out there. Um, so I also want to ask you, like I said, we talked, we touched on it earlier, but your beard, like, hey. I'm, a, I'm actually a big fan of the clean cut, Dro. Uh, I, I think know. a lot of people are. But I do, <laughs> I, I do appreciate the beard. We might have to flash a picture because of, like, you at full length because it's crazy. How long, how long, like, at what length has it been the longest? Um, probably the last time I grew my beard out. It was pretty long. I, but this is also, this is pretty long. I it's think getting there. This is like almost down to yeah, it's, it's getting to my chest, bro. I think you had ones that were like almost, yeah. I you know? think I was a little bit closer to like the you top were Gandalf. Of my pets. You were like Gandalf. I had a I had a long. You had beard. a Gandalf. We might have to flash a photo. Man, you, is it gonna get to that length yeah, this time? I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not cutting it off this time. This is. I'm. I'm literally <laughs> trying to this be a wizard, it. like Dumbledore, Gandalf, whoever it is. You'll really stand out as a rapper. Isildur. No wait, who's Isildur? He's not a wizard. Who's the one? Who's the one? I don't that? know every character. I don't know. Come on, of Lord of the Rings. Come on, Toasty. I like Lord of the Rings, but I'm not going to pretend. Do there's so many Google complex this? names. Yeah, there's a lot of complex names. The the, the whoever's Gandalf's mentor. I'm about to. I'm about Gandalf's to look this mentor. up. Mentor. I don't know because that that's what I'm trying to be. He was the strongest wizard, even though Gandalf got away. <laughs> Gandalf the Gray, he got away from this man. That dude was the truth. But maybe you could just market yourself as like this wizard rapper with this beard that goes to your feet. You know, that could be you. You, you yeah. know, that this crazy. <laughs> you know, like I saw this rapper who had a beard that was literally like dragging on the floor. I'll just change my name to Young Father Time. Hold on. There you go. Is. Gandalf is not a wizard in the classical fantasy sense of the word. One whose power and wisdom is learned in dusty towers poring over old books. He is a divine being. One of the Maiar. Who is very... Shut up, dude. He's a friggin' wizard. Can someone just tell me... So, so some of Gandalf's wizard, wisdom is inborn a part of his essence. This, this sounds like the most made up 
garbage. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, like, I make I make a lot of uh, Harry Potter references in my rhymes. Uh, well, not a lot. I've probably made, like, three or four. Yeah? What's your <laughs> favorite Harry Potter reference? Um, in Australia, magic turned a nigga to snakes like I was Professor Snape. That's probably my favorite one. The other thing I want to ask you about, the Flash Gordon video. Quite yeah. Well, first of all, quite a crazy song. Thanks, man. Um, you know, a great music video. Shut up. Ben filmed that one, right? Yeah, Ben filmed it, and Zeke, ugly family god, edited it. Zeke is Zeke is the truth. Y'all want videos edited by somebody who's actually, like, been to school at a good school and works for, like, real people. <laughs> Zeke's Get a real Zeke. person. Zeke he's in god. New York right now, right? Zeke is somewhere. <laughs> I feel like he's in New York. Zeke is a, he, like, he's based out of New York, but he... <laughs> He moves know. mysterious, you he know. Moves in the, the mysterious That's ways. all of u- ugly fam does. You yeah, know? ugly fam. We move in the shadows. For sure. Um, and so, first of all, shout out to Ben. Runs the arts block yeah. and. Um, well, now uh, it's called the Hawks and uh, Hawks Reed. and Reed's Performance Center. Hawks and Reed, Reed, <laughs> Reed. Uh, we gotta to get Reed. Reed playing out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean. Just what they've done in the last year with hip hop is crazy, and yeah. like what they've done for yeah. the valley. Um, and I actually made a. If you watch that music video, I think I make a quick cami because you shot that at the yeah. at the arts yeah, block, bro. Yeah, there's you. There's a bunch of people in there. Shouts out to Kayvon, Eric the Rat, Jesse Wellborn, uh, Justin, Mr. X is in that. Ricky's in that. Man, yeah, this, this is a good. There's probably Lauren's probably in that too. Now that I think about it, I don't know. There's a bunch of just, yeah, a bunch a nice of a crew. bunch of fam, yeah. you know. And you shot that? Did you? Sh- that's like an old bank, right? What's the deal? Yeah, yeah. What's the? Is that in Northampton or no, what's that? No, that's across like Kitty Corner from Hawks and Reed, is uh the like old Greenfield Savings Bank, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it was, but they own that that building too. Oh, okay. And is it- I've been trying to get them to throw a show down there. So Ooh, ben, that'd be ben, crazy. If you're listening, let's throw a show. What is that? So is it just not? Is it open to the public, or you, nah. you just Ben? Ben just hooked nah, it up. Ben, Ben has the keys. Ben that'd got be the a keys crazy to the show. City. Yeah. If we did it in like a, what do you call it? Not. A, I was gonna say a cell, not a cell. The bank vault. The bank vault. The vault itself is the mad vault. small. But call it the vault. You could call. We, you the could mu- still call it the vault, but then have like the, it has a cool little downstairs area that kind of is set up almost as if. They were going to have some show down there. Mm, exactly. We'll Maybe call it the vault. It's a new underground, you know. In Greenfield. it's Greenfield is so popping <laughs> that it needs another venue. I feel like I always talk. I was like, that's the one thing is like, I wish the, I wish we could take the arts block and just move it downtown. Because imagine if we yeah, had like an arts so block lit. downtown. Like we could get mad UMass kids to come out. You know, the but crazy thing is, is like lit, club lit, they want to do... They want to do like one hip hop night, and they want to do another one, right? But yeah, they don't stuff with Jordan, but right now. yeah, they do with Jordan and Ricky. And then I met the dude who was talking to him. He was like, "Yeah, we're gonna throw another one," but they didn't do it. That one sold out. It was packed. Like, we gonna lit you, is small, but do it was you have sold contact? Out. We need to. We need to. I know the dude. I had his. I, I I could get. I could figure it out. But then the other thing is, it's like Monkey Bar, Monkey Bar. Oh, you work there, right? Yeah, I work at you the a bouncer? Monkey Bar. Um, Monkey Bar could throw a dope dope ass event but the problem is is that they don't give a shit <laughs> they don't care they're just they like they they, everyone's shit. there just to listen to shitty music <laughs> yeah they're like good music doesn't matter like they, people are coming here to drink we're making like three grand i don't give a shit what's the craziest so, thing you've had to deal with at monkey bar probably just some vomit one time some dude tried to go into a bathroom that was out of order and i tried to just like politely be like mm, sir excuse <laughs> me sir you cannot use this bathroom and he still went in anyways and then when i tried to get him out he pushed me and then something just flipped, and I was just like, oh, my God, it's fucking on. Yeah, you went into, you know, <laughs> tough guy Joe. <laughs> nice guy Joe. Tro- tro- tough guy Joe, tro- activate. <laughs> and then I just, like, I literally threw him out the bar, like, kept throwing him repeatedly. I threw him into the wall. His girlfriend was like, oh, my God. And then... Uh, <laughs> See, don't mess after, with Joe. After I threw this dude into the wall, his head, like, hit the wall and he turned over and he was looking up at me like no 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 and i was just i was just yeah you, know, you were just done with I was, it uh, i was going buck at this point so then i just kept throwing him out i i will say the beer does make you look tougher you know hmm. it, yeah. it does add to the you know to the uh the persona don't like, mess with me like maybe you know? i ride a chopper and i'm part of a motorcycle gang yeah my, or maybe, maybe i turn maybe frogs. you're a swim dad or maybe i'm a swim dad 
Swags. Shout out to Swim Dads. Shouts out to Exeter and the Swim Team. Wh- who's Exeter? Is that a town? It's Exeter is a town, actually, as a matter of fact. But uh, this Exeter is uh, Phillips Exeter Academy in New Hampshire. Mm. One of the finest prep schools in uh, the northeastern seaboard. I do decree. I do declare. I do declare. Yeah. Let uh, it be so. Yeah, my brother is a graduate. Filthy graduate, and then he's gonna come to UMass. <laughs> UMass, is, UMass is fun. Yeah, but UMass is a, you know Exeter is a place where you spend a lot of money for your yeah yeah. No yeah. no G to my brother. I love my brother. No for sure. But uh, <laughs> like <laughs> people go to it like was silly. Oxford. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, for no, sure. my brother's a smart dude, and I love him, and he did way better than me in school. So congrats to my brother, and he'll probably graduate from college too. There so you shouts go. Shouts out to my brother. There you go. Shouts to the graduates. Um. Yeah. Um. I also want to ask you. Like you said, you have. You said you got some new stuff coming out. What other? Yeah. What upcoming projects do, do you got in the works? Um. All right. So like specifically, what I'm working on, I'm trying to be real focused on right now, is Joe Brown is dead, and I've been kind. Of, I've been working on it since Final Four. Yeah. And like my plan was to like release Final Four and then release Joe Brown is dead, but then I got s- really serious with it, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I didn't want to like. To be honest with you, I'm trying to make something that my friends, my friends, like my friends my age, who yeah. are like 27, 28, 29, and 30, 31, 32, with like kids and stuff like that, will be proud. Some to be serious like, stuff. I know this dude, yeah. So that's that's what I'm really trying to do. I also have some bangers on it that I can just play live and like promote it um, because I'm also, this is something, I haven't announced this yet, so I guess, uh, I mean, maybe I shouldn't even say anything because it's bad luck, but I'm trying to, trying to book this tour right now through the South where I got a show in Denver and something brewing in Dallas and that's I guess that's really all that I'm going to talk about right now because I got some other things brewing but they're not even close to, yeah, like, so to fruition so maybe a little, little so, southern tour yeah, coming up at some point southern tour and then um, yeah I got just more singles that I'm dropping word that's that's it so Joe Brown is dead probably be finished by like fall I just want to make sure that it's like really really clean that it's got some good visuals and I'm going to try and shop it around to some like independent local labels that are pretty much barely labels but we'll like just pay for the yeah spotify and itunes sure. and stuff like that Get so i don't have to do it Get myself little... you know yeah definitely and uh and generally too what like these little like labels will do is they'll give you something they'll be like okay here is three thousand dollars for mm-hmm. your like mixing and mastering and like all this other stuff which i do myself anyways yeah and then they won't actually let you get your songs until like you make them 10 grand or you pay for it yourself or whatever and uh yeah so yeah i'm not worried about it for sure <laughs> drove around his dead can be somebody's for like five grand you got five grand let me know <laughs> drove around his dead is yours word um and before we finish up any shout outs any other promo you want to do um yeah look out oh my god i didn't even talk about so many things bro i'm actually working on a lot of different things but yeah what, what, all right, we all got right, time. right gothic yes gothic is something i'm working on we're gonna make bags that's it just a bag just just like a, a bag, bag line is gonna be well for now it'll be a bag and it's gonna be dope um ugly fam we're about to come out with some new apparel and uh it's gonna be cool it's gonna be candy colored candy colored dripping that sounds me that sounds fire and, um um yeah that's really it i'm trying to work on merch but i don't think it's really gonna get there jimmy shoe will come out with a second season and yeah uh, i really i need I, I really need that jimmy shoe wang all right well here's the other thing i'm gonna do because a lot of people wanted the last kenyan thing that i did i'll just I like put the out, original one i'll one put out i'll put like out in your vines yeah i'll put out the original jimmy shoe wang and then i'll drop the remix again and then i'll also make the the kenyan stuff either sweatshirt or t-shirt available i'm gonna just put it all up again what what kind of bags are these what are you talking like satchels um a merce i mean maybe you could kind of see it as a merce um this is all right you want to you want to know what my idea is i shouldn't even say anything bro i can't i I shouldn't say anything if i had a manager if if i had a real manager and a publicist here they'd be dude if don't say anything stop talking If you say it, then you you got to do it, you know. Well, if I say it, somebody it. might take it too. That's more what quick, I'm worried though. about. Um, it's uh, I'm I'm just gonna say it's gonna it's gonna be a fanny pack. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fire fanny, fanny pack, pack. Yeah. a hip hop fanny pack. Yeah, actually, it's and it's really going to be a fire fanny pack. Like like maybe maybe you can bust shells through it. I don't know. <laughs> Stay tuned, guys. Um, and yeah, that's it. Little Harry's too. I'm gonna sell fake beards. <laughs> Joe Brown beard. Joe that, Brown that's beards. perfect merch right there, you know? Yeah, it's a little bit 
I mean, maybe I'll sell like 15. So maybe I'll, <laughs> you know, if you want to look like me with a beard and everything, if you're ugly like me, get you a little hairy. Yeah. That's it. Those are, the, those are all the things I'm working on right now. I'm excited about it. And before you go, we need to, ha- we need to hear you spit something. Do you want to, you, oh, we, shit. we okay. can either, you can do something written or you can do a freestyle. No, no, no. Just put something on. You want to, uh, you want to beat? What kind of, would uh, you got a preference? Mm. Nah. Nah, you could surprise me with something. What do you think of this? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, what is this? Some uh, black helicopter? Books of War? Books of War? Doom? RZA? Is it really? Damn. I always thought this was like some black helicopter. Ooh! Doom and RZA. Hmm. I remember I used to listen to Doom and Rizza used to roll up the shit in a Rizla Maybe come back and spit a little shizza But mostly I would get it from the jizza Like, see a girl in jizzer She was coming around, always trying to kiss her But I was out and kissing me, trying to hit him right pow There in the kisser uh, Listen here, you mister I might just spit a little verse like it's Lister Reen, I'll the time I'm listening, I feel like sometimes people are listening. I'm out here and I do it like Li Ming or Lu Lu Li Mu Shu. I can't get it, I don't have enough shoes. I might just kick it, I might just lose, I might just get bruised. I'm feeling like I might just let loose. Sometimes I'm out my mind off the caboose. Last train, the last stop. Here we go, and now I'm losing out the plots I used to chill with a bunch of thoughts A bunch of dudes who didn't think like bots Just click and go, collect the profit Now I'm back here spitting shit like a prophet Um, you just a muppet And I don't wanna talk about no puppets They got one in office and I'm erupted I'ma come back and flip it, I'ma cuff it I used to sell a little rock Just a little bit, but it did cost a lot and then I might also have some pills that you could take and you could go off and have a thrill. It was late night shit. I was working in the clubs, but this was before I was a bouncer at the monkey dub. Like, I was getting it for the flood. I was getting it on the front. And I always knew I had the flood. I had my whole bros like a brood. Mm, but none of us were bloods, no gang shit. The only thing they got was showing love. I made a little bit of money out there in Australia. That's real. That's the truth, though. Dude, that was fire because I know that was a freestyle. <laughs> Mad people be like, "Oh, this is a freestyle," and then they come in and they're like, "I'm like, that was nice, <laughs> but you know, come on, it was too nice to be a freestyle." But that was a nice freestyle Word, right thanks, there. <laughs> Drove Brown in the building once again. Thanks for coming <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> Thanks for blessing us with your presence. Yeah, Yo, thanks, bro. I'm always happy to do shit with you, man. I have fun. I always do too. All right, thanks, Toasty. For sure, dude. <clears throat> Good evening. You're watching Hip Hop Made Me Do It with DJ Toasty Z. I'm your hip hop guest for this evening, rapper Dro No Space Brown. <laughs>